Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on a topic. When thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. So in other words, he's telling us when his doctrine and teachings are in the earth, when they come to his people, the inhabitants of the world, everyone will learn righteousness. Everyone will learn what the truth of his word is saying. We know this word is 100% spiritual. All of these words have meanings and he speaks in dark sayings and parables and allegories and riddles. And once again, he's telling us when thy judgments, when thy doctrines and teachings are in the earth, when they are in the people who he gave them to, according to Psalms 147, 19 and 20, he says, then the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Matter of fact, before we get started, I'm going to go to Psalms 147, 19 and 20, then we'll get started with this teaching. It just came to my mind even as we starting out the teaching with the title. Verse 19 and 20 says, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments, meaning his doctrine and teaching unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, his doctrine and teachings, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, confess ye the spirit of God. So he's telling us he have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. So when thy judgments, when thy doctrine and teachings are in the earth, when they are in Jacob, when they are in, in the house of Israel, when they learn them, when they remember them, when they wake up out of deep sleep and remember what was given to them, then the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. And we know it's a lot of doctrines floating around, a lot of denominations, but they don't follow the instructions of the most high God of Israel. According to Isaiah 28, 9 and 10, Psalms 119, 4 and 104, and Isaiah 34 and 16. These are our basic instructions of the most high God of Israel. So we're going to get started with this teaching. And it's my prayer that someone would be richly edified and you gain something to help you along, along your journey and your walk with the most high. So we're going to start at the book of Isaiah chapter 26. And we're going to go from verse 1 down to verse 20D. It says, in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah, in the people of the most high God of Israel. We have a strong city. Salvation will Yahweh appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth 
may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the spirit of God forever. For, the, for in the spirit of God, Jehovah, which means Christ, the anointed one, salvation, the anointed, is everlasting strength. For he bring it down them that dwell on high. The lofty city, he laid it low. He laid it low even to the ground. He bring it, it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, even the foot of the poor and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright do wait the path of the just. Yea, in the way of thy judgment, O Spirit of God, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name, meaning is to thy way and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night when I was in darkness, my soul desired thee when I was lacking knowledge in the night. Yeah, with my spirit within me, will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, y'all, thy doctrine and teachings are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. See, we didn't always have this knowledge. We was in, in the in the night, we was in darkness. We had a desire to follow after the most high, but we didn't know the instructions. We didn't know how to understand his word spiritually. We didn't know how to precept his word. So that desire, that fire was in the night. It was, we was lacking knowledge. But then he goes to say, he said, yeah, with my spirit within me, my desire, will I seek the early? We know according to, matter of fact, let me pivot for a moment and let's go to Proverbs chapter eight and verse 17. It says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. So if you're going to seek him early, he's telling you, according to the word, you will find him. This is Christ speaking. It's Christ speaking. See, some of you that's listening might be in the night right now. You might be poor and needy right now, not poor physically, but poor spiritually. You're lacking the knowledge of the most high God of Israel. You're needy. You need this knowledge. This knowledge is your lifeline. This information is your lifeline to eternal life. You're desiring him in the night while you still lacking knowledge. He said, yeah, with my Spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Let favor be showed to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness? You can take your time and show someone Precept upon precept, line upon line, hear little and dear little, and they still will not get it because why? Their heart is wicked. They don't have eyes to see, they don't have ears to hear, and they don't have a heart to understand. They want to hold on to what's been 
planted in their mind what's been embedded in their mind. They don't want to let go. Instead of following the instructions of the most high God of Israel. He said, in a land of uprightness, will he deal unjustly? He's going to deal unjustly with the uprightness. And will not behold the majesty of the spirit of God. He's not going to remember the majesty. He's not going to remember it. This is what he's telling us. You can show favor to the wicked and the wicked is still not going to remember the majesty of the spirit of God. Oh, spirit of God, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see but they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemies shall devour them. See, their desire, their own heart's desire is going to devour them. It's what's going to happen. Because they're going to go after lust. They're going to go after backbiting and envying and strife. Everything that's laid out in Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 19, down to 21. And it'll tell you, all who do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what's going down. The ones that's wicked. He said, oh, spirit of God, thou will ordain peace for us for thou also has wrought all our works in us O spirit of god our guide other lords other rulers other leaders other kings beside thee have had dominion over us when we was in those churches when we was being led we was being taught to worship another God, another Jesus, another savior, another salvation, a fleshly king, not a spiritual king, but a fleshly king. Other lords beside thee have had dominion over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name, meaning of thy way, the only, most high. They are dead. They shall not live. They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore, has thou visited and destroyed them, all of these auto gods. And we know the meaning of idol is a devil. It's what we was guilty of worshiping. He said, therefore has thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Thou has increased the nation, O spirit of God. You're starting to wake up. We're starting to wake up. We're increasing daily. These dry bones is starting to come together. Can these dry bones live? Can the nation of Israel wake up to remember what's written in their heart, what's written on our minds? He said, Thou has increased the nation, O Spirit of God. Thou has increased the nation. Thou art glorified. Thou has removed it far unto all the ends of the earth, to the four corners of the earth where we are scattered. We're starting to learn about the most high God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, in Jacob, the God of the 
Hebrews. We starting to learn about his son, which means his servant, which is Christ, which is the word that came down out of heaven. Out of matter of fact, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, and verse 15. It says, Thine almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne as comparison a fierce man of war into the midst of a land of destruction. So this is what's going down. We're learning about this one right here. We learning that this word that came down came to save us and deliver us from the wickedness that we was partaking in. This word came down to purge us and cleanse us and to execute judgment. Word came down to give us some get right. We starting to learn the spiritual things and not to continually be on milk. We're getting on strong meat. Understanding parables and speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues using precepts. All because of your son, meaning your servant, which is that word, which is Christ. Thou has increased the nation, O Spirit of God. Thou has increased the nation. Thou art glorified. Thou has removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. Spirit of God, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Mm. This is what happened, family. Always knew we had a spiritual connection, but we was lacking the knowledge. But this word, which is alive, came to free us from the prison houses. The churches where we was learning those other doctrines. The camps where we was learning those other doctrines, how to be a dictator and how to have five and six and two and three different wives. All of those other doctrines that was sent us to hell. Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. You told us that who the Lord loved, he chastened it. So he's chastening us because he loved us and it didn't feel good, but it was for our good. Chastening us like as a woman with child that draw near the time of her delivery is in pain as we getting hooked up by the most high, we getting hooked up by dying almighty word that would came leap down from out of heaven as a fierce man of war and cried out in her pains. So have we been in thy sight, O oh Spirit of God. He been going through because this word is coming to correct us, to heal us, to convert us. We have been 
with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth with. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. See, the ones that belong to the Most High is going to go through pure hell in this life because who they follow. Everything is not going to always be peaches and, and rosy. You're going to go through some things. And matter of fact, I'm going to pivot for a moment just to prove it to you. Let's go over here to Matthew. Chapter 10. And verse 22. It says, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. He didn't say some men. You're going to be hated of all. All men hate it. You're going to be considered as an abomination to them. You're going to be considered as a most hateful thing to them. This is what's going to go down, family. You're going to be hated of all men for his ways. Sake, we know the word name means way's sake. This is what's going to happen. He said, But he that endured to the end, all the way to the end of this life of ours, not halfway, not part of the way, but he that endured to the end shall be saved, in other words, shall be delivered. This is what's going to go down. This is what's going to go down. Let me take you another place and let's, let's get it a little closer. Someone say, well, all men, what about all men? Okay, let's, let's bring it a little closer. That didn't get your attention. Let's get a little closer. Luke 21, verse 16 through 17. It says, and ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kin folks. See, all skin folks is not kin folks. And friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. They're going to act like you don't even exist. You're not even a part of the family no more. They call you the black sheep of the family. And ye shall be hated of all men for my way's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. Meaning this knowledge that I give you. If you endure to the end, you shall not perish. Meaning what? The second death, the lake of fire. Why? Because verse 19, in your patience, possess ye your souls. So he's getting real close and personal right here. Parents, brethren, kin folks, friends, it don't get no closer than that. This is what a believer and a follower of Christ is going to go through, according to scripture, not according to what's in somebody's head, what's in somebody's feeling, but according to scripture, precepts. 
So it says in verse 18, we have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as comparison it, were brought forth with. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. We, we just being treated wrongly on every side. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. Shall they arise, awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. These valley of dry bones, we got to wake up. We got to get resurrected by this word. We got to remember what was written on our heart and our mind. We got to be a part of this first resurrection. Because the second death have no power against them. That's part of the first resurrection. According to, matter of fact, let's hit that right quick. Let's go to Revelation. And tie everything in. It says, Revelations 20 and 6, bless meaning giving wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. As you're waking up to this knowledge of truth. On such the second death have no power but they shall be priests of Yahweh and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So this is what it's speaking of. We are going through this thousand year reign right, right as we speak. The first resurrection getting Woken up out of deep sleep. We getting out of that dry dust. Like he's saying, where we were spiritually dead. Now we becoming spiritually alive. He said, thy dead man shall live together with my dead body. Shall they arise, awake and sing, confess ye that dwell in the dust. For thy do is as the dew of herbs, just the knowledge. This is that water, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. He say, and the earth shall cast out the dead. This is what's going on. He says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. So in other words, once you come to the knowledge of truth, once you get in that secret place of the, the most high, don't you come out talking about you going to learn another doctrine to add to his you're going to yoke up with some other folk that's not kin folk, that's not following the most high God of Israel. They're following another God. They're not following Christ, Yahweh Shah the Messiah. They're following another Jesus, another Savior. Don't do that. He says, come, my people, enter down into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. When you get to this knowledge of truth, you better get there, stay there, and study to show thyself approved. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In fact, let's tie somewhere else. Isaiah 91, he say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the, un of, the, of the almighty, the almighty father. So he says, come, my people, 
enter down into thy chambers and shut the doors. He said, I will say of the spirit of God, he is my refuge in my fortress, my guide in him will I trust. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. So I'm going to make the connection one more time. Come, my people, into thou, into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Now we're going to go a little deeper and get a little bit more understanding in John, the 14th chapter, 2a. 2a. And it says, in my father's house, in the almighty's house, are many mansions. His Many mansions because why he just got to telling us, come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut the doors. We showed you in Isaiah, I mean, in uh, Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. The Almighty is the Father. And in here, in my Father's house are many mansions. It's many of them. It's scattered to the four corners of the earth. Not only this generation, but all of the generations before us. Remember those 12,000 out of each tribe? Out of each generation? 12 tribes? He even show us the blueprint over in Revelation. In my father's house are many mansions. See, you got some of us. We didn't want to do what he told us to do. We didn't want to do what he told us to do. And I'm going to go back here just so we can see it for a visual. We didn't want to do what he told us to do right here in verse 20 in Isaiah 26. When he told us to come, my people. Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Some of us left the, we came in, but we left the doors wide open. We left the doors wide open to where we wasn't in safety. Either something could have come in and pull us out or we chose to to go back out on our own. We want to search and find something. We had itching in ears and, and, and tickly ears. Something in the world was still pulling and grabbing at us. We wanted to have the both of uh, uh, the best of both worlds, as they say. We want to try to serve God in Mammon. Some of us, we didn't want to come in the chambers and shut the doors. We was like those five foolish virgins. Ten was wise and ten, or five was wise and five was foolish. It's those ten virgins. 
We didn't have no oil. We had oil, but we did we let it ran out. We did run well, but who hindered us? We let the, the oil run out in our lamp. Then when it ran out, we tried to borrow some oil from the others, and it was like, uh -uh, we can't give you none of our oil because if we give you our oil, it won't be none for us. You got to go and fetch your own. See, this is a personal work with the Most High. You need to be getting your oil right now, which is this word, this anointing, this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding. The five, wide, the five foolish virgins, they went out to go get some more oil. And when they came back, the doors were shut. They couldn't get back in. You got to keep that lamp trim and burning. This is what that parable was speaking of when he says, come my people into thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. You come to this level of knowledge of the most high God of Israel, don't you look back like Lot's wife did. Don't you turn back. You mark time and you keep going forward. You keep pressing forward. Let's keep going. Let's let our brother Paul help us out a little bit. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul even said, I beseech you. He didn't say he asked it. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. This body of ours need to be the house, the sanctuary, the temple where the spirit of God dwells. So we have to present our bodies, not some church building. He done told us that his spirit don't dwell in buildings that's made with hands. I don't care how pretty you, you build it, how big you build it, how small you build it, how, how good it looks. He don't care nothing about that. His spirit doesn't dwell in buildings, brick and mortar that's made with hands. Can we get this through our understanding? Paul say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, meaning separated acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. This is what's going on, family. In other words, come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut the doors. We should not be conformed to this world at all. We should be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we can prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. And we should be presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to Yahweh, which is our reasonable service. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors. See, this is the mansions that he's speaking of, in John 14 and 2 8, when he said, At my father's house, there are many mansions many temples where his spirit is dwelling. The question is, are you one of those mansions? Is your temple being prepared for the most high? Are you 
presenting your body as a living sacrifice? This is the question. My brother Paul gonna help us out a little bit more. First Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. It says, know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh, ye are the sanctuary of Yahweh, ye are the mansion of Yahweh, ye are the house of Yahweh, and that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you? He's asking a question. If any man defile the temple of Yahweh, him shall Yahweh destroy, for the temple of Yahweh is holy, which temple ye are. So he's telling us, our house have to be clean. It can't be defiled. It have to be holy, separated, set apart. This is the reason why he tell us when we come to this knowledge of truth, come my people, enter into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. This is why. Because any one that's outside of the chamber, anyone that's out there playing in the wilderness, anyone else that's not in a secret place of the most high that's not abiding under the shadows of the almighty. They're in wickedness. They're in unrighteousness. They're in ungodliness. And in the eyes of the most high, they are considered an abomination. That's a reason why he's warning us to come and enter into thy chambers and to shut the doors. Because he know his judgment is have to be executed. And matter of fact, I'm a pivot Back to Matthew 10 before I go to my next precept. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. It's Christ speaking. He said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. This is what he came to send. He said, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father. And the daughter against her mother, and the daughter in law against her mother in law. And a man's foes, a man's enemies, shall be they of his own household. So he's trying to tell us he don't care if this is your family, he don't care if it's your spouse, he don't care if it's your father, your mother, he don't care about flesh at all. This word have an assignment to do. And this word is going to carry out that assignment. It's coming to bring a sword, to execute judgment. And this is why he keep telling us, he keep telling us, and for some reason, it's, it, it just keeps coming up in my spirit, to just keep repeating, to keep warning the people, come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Now, we're going to continue on with this. We're going to start at uh, back at verse 20 E, Isaiah 26, verse 20 E. It says, Hide thyself as it were 
for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. In other words, the judgment of the Most High be overpassed. Verse 21. For behold, remember the Spirit of God coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, for their acts of sin. The earth also shall disclose her blood, the people that's living in it, the, well, the life that's in there, the ones that's dead and sleeping. It's going to disclose her blood and she'll no more cover her sling. So this is speaking about when we all going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He going to raise us up to be judged for the works and deeds that's done in his body. He said the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Everyone is going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone. Matter of fact, I'm just going to pivot. This is not in my teaching, but I'm going to pivot just for a moment and just to show a little bit more, a couple more precepts to tie to that verse 21 and give some more understanding. I'm not going to spound, but I'm just going to show where it's at. And let's see here. You're going to go to Second Address, chapter 7. In verse 30, it says, And the world shall be turned into the old silent seven days, like as in the former judgments, so that no man shall remain. And after seven days, the world that yet awaken not shall be raised up and that shall die that is corrupt. So in other words, the ones that's awakened not, the ones that was not resurrected according to the knowledge of truth, the ones that it's not following Christ. We just saw it in, in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20 or verse 21. The earth is gonna uncover his, his blood, her blood, and uncover her slain. He said, and she'll be raised up. And that shall die that is corrupt. So this means the second death, the lake of fire. And say, and the earth shall restore those that are asleep in her. And so shall the dust, those that dwell in silence. And the secret places shall deliver those souls that were committed unto them. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment, it's the judgment seat of Christ, and misery shall pass away, and, long, and the long suffering shall have an end, but judgment only shall remain 
truth shall stand and faith shall wax strong. So this wasn't a part of my teaching, but I was led to come here between verse 30 and verse 34, second address chapter seven, to give you a little bit more information tying in to this Isaiah 26 and 21, where it was saying, for behold, remember, the spirit of God coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So you can get a little bit more understanding here. So let's keep going. Psalms 124 in verse 1 and 2. If it had not been the spirit of God who was on our side, now may Israel say, we can say this together, if it had not been the spirit of God who was on our side, when men rose up against us, mm think of all of the things that was set up for us to fail. All of the abortion clinics, the liquor stores, fast food restaurants in our neighborhoods for us to be sick and, and drugs and, and being a junkie and alcoholic, and so we can die, we eat the bad foods, the worst foods there is. We can trick out our own people for money. Being a experiment on different sickness, syphilis and different things. Can you help but think about those Tuskegee Airmen? Our women having to have procedures of a hysterectomy without any pain medicine. They said we didn't feel pain. And most of all, the book of remembrance, the Holy Bible, was kept away from us. Couldn't even read it for ourselves. If it had not been the Spirit of God who was on our side when men rose up against us, Psalms 83, verse 1 through 5. Keep not thy silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O Yahweh. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They didn't want us to wake up out of deep sleep. They didn't want us to become spiritually alive. They wanted us to stay spiritually dead. But if it had not been for the spirit of God that was on our side. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. 
Psalms 124, verse 3 and 5. Then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. See, we got to know what this, these waters are. These waters are ones that's teaching us things that's contrary to the most high God of Israel. These waters are these men that rose up against us, whether it be physically or spiritually. Because I'm getting ready to show you spiritually what some of our own kinfolk is rising up against us, either knowingly or unknowingly, it still has the same outcome. Isaiah 27 and 1, he said, In that day, the Spirit of God with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, that crooked preacher, that crooked pastor that's teaching a split tongue doctrine. He giving you a little bit of truth and a whole lot of lies, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. This is these men that is in this water, and they're in this water. And let's come back here to Psalms 124. These men that rose up against us. He said, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The things that they was teaching, the stream had gone over our soul, having us believing in the Trinity. When he telling you is only one God, one faith, and one baptism. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Verse six, bless giving wisdom, knowledge, and understanding be the spirit of God who have not given us a prey to their teeth, to their doctrine that we was brought up on. Christianity, believing in a three-headed God. You got some believe that Jesus is God, not understanding spiritual meanings of these words. You got some believing it don't matter what you do. All you got to do is repeat the sinner's prayer and you're going to be saved. You got some teach that once saved, always saved. You got some that teach that everybody going to heaven. These are these waters, these waters that had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. But blessed be the spirit of God who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. You imagine we being guilty of teaching our kids these things. Teaching them about Santa Claus and Christmas, having them going to bed at night and praying to a white Santa Claus to give them some gifts. This is what we have done. 
But if it had not been the spirit of God who was on our side, such is almighty word out of heaven as a fierce man of war. Let's go get some more information on these Leviathan, this old crooked serpent. Micah, chapter three and verse five. Thus said the spirit of God concerning the prophets that make my people err that bite with their teeth. Now let's, matter of fact, let's back up. See, we got to connect these precepts, family. We got to connect these precepts. Let's back up for a minute. Let's back up. Because we just got to read this in Psalms 122, 124, verse 6. It says, Blessed be the Spirit of God who have not given us as a prey to their teeth, to their doctrine, to their filth. I want to make sure you, you get that connection. Now he said, thus said the spirit of God concerning the prophets that make my people err. Have us in error. We worship in flesh. We pray, pray into flesh. And we don't realize that this makes God angry with us. We pray into a fleshly king. Even Yahawashah himself, even Jesus himself said, why did I call it me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. We pray into a man, we worship in a man which is flesh, when we need to be worshiping the spirit of God. He says, thus said the spirit of God concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that put it not into their mouths. They even prepare war against him. Let's get some more information. Deuteronomy chapter, 20, uh, chapter 18, verse 20 through 22. And he told us what he was going to do right in the scriptures. But we got to go to the law book to get it. Deuteronomy chapter 18. He says, but the prophet, matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 18. He said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. He going to put his spirit in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. This is what Yahweh was doing. This is what Jesus was doing. He was speaking the words that the most high put in his mouth. He said, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So we should, should be following the, the path, the example that Yahweh set, the example that Jesus set, not worshiping him as a God, but following the example. Verse 20, let's get back to these prophets in the book of Micah chapter five. He said, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou shall say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Spirit of God have not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Spirit of God, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Spirit of God have not spoken. But the prophet have spoken it presumptuously, thou shall not be afraid of him. He's telling us. 
they're going to tell you, oh, if you sold this $500 seed, you're going to be blessed. You pay your tithe and offering, the God, God going to bless you. You want healing, you need to order this holy water. They tell you all of this foolishness. He said it, when a prophet speak it in the name of the spirit of God, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the spirit of God have not spoken. He's telling us. So let's go back to the book of Michael. Micah chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. He said, therefore night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision. And it shall be dark unto you that ye shall not divine. It's not going to be no knowledge. And the sun shall go down over the prophets and the day shall be dark over them. It's not going to be no knowledge, no wisdom, no understanding because they're saying things that's out of their own mind. And they are causing the most high people to error. He says, then shall the seers be ashamed. These seers is the same as prophets and the diviners confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips but there is no answer of Yahweh. It's no answer of, of God because why? They're speaking and preaching out of their own flesh. Verse 11, he say, the hairs thereof judge for reward. They're teaching for reward. And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. These are the things that these preachers are doing and the most high is going to hook them up because why his word is for free. His true servants not going to charge you no money. They're not going to teach for hire. They're not going to teach for a pastor salary. They're not going to be looking to get money for doing the work of the most high. He said, yet yeah, will they lean upon the spirit of God and say, is not the spirit of God among us. None evil can come upon us. This is what they say. Proverbs chapter 21. <clears throat> Verse 16. He said, a man that wandereth out of understanding shall remain in a congregation of the dead. So in other words, these same prophets that teaching for hire, they divining for money, they doing all these spiritual prayer lines for money, they judging for reward, these are men that have wandered out of the way of understanding. These are men that's remaining in the congregation of the dead. And the sad thing about it, they are leading the congregation of the dead. They are followers, these men and women that follow them and treat them with high respect, treat them as a God, giving them all the hard-earned money to tell them lies. They are leading them to the pits of hell. So in other words, you have pastors, prophets, and teachers that's getting paid money that's leading the congregation of the dead. And this word came to resurrect us from the dead. This word came as a fierce man of war to wake us up. That's what this word came to do. So you got prophets that's leading the congregation of the dead. Ones that want to jump up and down and shout. They love them some Jesus and not understanding the spiritual meaning 
behind the name and, and, and that you're supposed to be following the spirit and not worshiping flesh. Spirit of Christ. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15 and 16. He says, the ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. We just got the reading that in Proverbs 21 and 16. These will be the ones that's leading their people down the road of destruction. They're following the ancient and honorable, which is Satan. He got prophets and teachers also. And all of these people that is following him every Sunday going in these buildings in the congregation of the dead is going down a pathway of destruction. Let's go to the book of Esther. Chapter 14. And for some folks that have a different type of apocrypha, it would be additions to Esther chapter five. But for this Bible that I'm using, it's going to be Esther chapter 14. And we're going to hit verse five through seven. It says, from my youth up, I have heard in the tribe of my family that thou, O creator, took it Israel from among all people and our fathers from all their predecessors for a perpetual inheritance. And thou has performed whatsoever thou didst promise them. And now we have sinned before thee. Therefore has thou given us into the hands of our enemies because we worship their gods. O creator, thou art righteous. See family, we are guilty of worshiping the God of our enemies. They gave us a picture of a white Jesus and a doctrine that came along with him. The doctrine of Christianity. Believing in a three-headed God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, a, a three-headed God. You got some of the Jesus only crew that just believe that Jesus is God, like I was saying earlier. But we worship their gods and their doctrines. And this is the reason why we go through all of the trouble that we go through now. Oh, creator, thou art righteous. Psalms. 96, verse 3 through 5. It says, declare his glory among the heathen, among the ungodly, among the wicked. His wonders among all people. For the spirit of God is great and greatly to be praised, greatly to be confessed for all the things that he have done for us. He is to be feared above all God. For all the gods of the nations are idols. He's telling us, family. And we know the word idol means devil. So all the gods of the nations are devils. And I'm going to show that precept in a little bit to, pr to prove that. He said, but the spirit of God made the heaven. 
So he's telling us if all the gods of the nations are idols, we are guilty of worshiping and following the other nation's gods. He's telling us right here in the scripture. Some of it might have been knowingly or unknowingly, but we are guilty of worshiping these nations' gods, the ones that was given to us. He said, but the spirit of God made the heavens. So now let's go back to the book of Esther and get some more information. Chapter 14. We'll see why it's being said the way it is. Verse 8 through 10. It says, nevertheless, it satisfied them not who these other nations it satisfied them not that we are in bitter captivity, but they have stricken hands with their idols, with their devils. <clears throat> and I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a slow down right here and I'm going to read this verse 8 spiritually. It says, nevertheless, it satisfied them not that we are in bitter captivity, but they have stricken powers with their idols, with their devils. See, that doctrine of Christianity is a strong doctrine. And someone can tell you something without showing it to you they can tell you to believe something without having to prove it to you and you automatically believe it that's a strong doctrine that's a stronghold that is a chain around your neck but they have stricken powers with their idols that they will abolish the thing that thou with thy mouth has ordained. We don't care about what he, what co covenant he made, what agreement we made. We're going to preach this, that he said it to all nations, that he is for all people, and he made a covenant with all people. We don't care about that covenant that's in Exodus 19, uh, verse 5 through 8. We don't care about that. He's telling us how strong these people are with their idols, that they will abolish the thing that thou with thy mouth have ordained. In other words, they want to be God. They want to go up against the most high. Oh, most high, we hear what you got in your word, but we ain't going with that. Matter of fact, we're going to take the Apocrypha out, the 1611 Bible. We're just going to give them 66 books, and we're going to teach them our doctrine, give them our God and the image of our God, and they're going to have to roll with it. Why? Because they in servitude to us. They are our slaves, so we're going to teach them what they need to know. And they're going to teach their kids, and their kids going to teach their kids, and their kids going to teach their kids until where we at today. And we still here dealing with the pieces, picking it up, waking up out of deep sleep. So they wanted to abolish the thing that thou with thy mouth has ordained and destroy thine inheritance and stop the mouth of them that praise thee, that confess thee and quench the glory of thy house, thy temple, thy mansion, thy sanctuary, and of thine altar. Speaking about you. And open the mouths of the heathen to set forth the praises of the idols and to magnify a fleshly king forever. See, this is what they tried to, to get away with. But if it had not been for the spirit of God that was on our side, they gave us movies to resemble their, their fleshly king. They plastered pictures all over the world 
some of you still got a picture of a white Jesus in your house, in your church where you go fellowship. I remember as a kid, even as going up to an adult, we had church fans with white Jesus on them. As you, you're a kid, you listening to them preach. And the word pricking your heart and then you got the fan in your hand and you looking at white Jesus. <laughs> that would mess a child up. They gave you this image and the doctrine that went along with the image. And the reason why they did it is telling you right here in the scripture that they will abolish the thing that thou with thy mouth has ordained and destroy thine inheritance and stop the mouth of them that praise thee and quench the glory of thy house and of thine altar and open the mouth of the heathen, the ungodly to set forth the praises of the idols. So no more will we be able to praise and confess the most high, but now they want you to praise their idol. That white Jesus. In other words, that's another savior. Because that's what the word means. It means salvation. Jesus Christ, salvation, the anointed one. Yahweh Shah, the Messiah is what it means. But they want to give you an image so you can praise their idols. They're devils, and to magnify a fleshly king forever. Why in the world would you want to be magnifying and worshiping a fleshly king? Matter of fact, let me pivot for a minute. Let me, let me pull this precept, uh, just popped up in my mind. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 50. He said, now I say, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, neither, neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. So if you are programmed in your mind to magnify a fleshly king where is that king because according to scripture it's telling us that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of yahweh so where is your king the ones that's magnifying this fleshly king see these are the questions that you got to answer we know this fleshly king, this image of this white Jesus is Caesar Bourget. So ordinary man. They took an ordinary man picture and they deceived the whole world making them think that this was their fleshly king, that this was the Jesus of the Bible, that this was Yahweh This is what they have done. Matter of fact, I want to hit one more precept to tie into this. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and verse. Let's get right where I want to get at. Mm 
Okay, verse 21 is what I want to get at. And this fleshly king, matter of fact, matter of fact, let me, since I'm already here, let me, let me, uh, let me come up to verse 15, since I'm already dealing with this fleshly king. It says, for a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he had made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as a god, which was then a dead man. This is what this image that they plastered over the world, speaking of, and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Thus in process of time and ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Engraving images were worshiped by the commandments of kings whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored to the end that by this, their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent as if he were present. Also the singular diligence of the art of, of Foster did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. For he peradventure willing to please one in authority forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. And so the multitude allured by the grace of the work took him now for a God, which a little before was but honored. Speaking about this same image of this white Jesus that we see plastered all over the world. Verse 21, and this was an occasion to deceive the world. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. We just showed you over in Esther what was really going on. It says for men serving either calamity or tyranny did a strive unto stones and stocks, the incommunable name, meaning the ancient and honorable. This is what's going on. So this is really all I wanna pull from right here. You can read the rest in your spare time. But what I wanted to pull is this was an occasion to deceive the world. And before we move on, I want to come to Esther one more time and show you what was going on. Verse 7, we worship their gods. Verse 8. Nevertheless, it satisfied them not that we are in bitter captivity, but they have stricken powers with their idols. In other words, witchcraft and our doubt you, that they will abolish the thing that thou with thy mouth has ordained and destroy thine inheritance and stop the mouth of them that confess thee and quench the glory of thy house and of thine altar. Well, we should be confessing to the most high, presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, being that altar, keeping our lamp trim and burning bright. He set out to quench the glory of thy house. And not only that, in open the mouths of the heathen to set forth the confessions of the idols. Instead of we confessing to the most high, 
and his spirit Christ, we confessing to our idol, to our devil, and to magnify a fleshly king. Now, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that someone is getting this. This is the reason why I often repeat myself and continue to go over information. I know for some it may be aggravating, but I'm led to make sure that everyone can get this. The sick, the lame, the torn, the poor, the needy. If you are full age and if you are strong meat, God bless you. But I set out to make sure I can reach the ones that's lacking. So I need you to have patience with me when I'm constantly repeating things. Because there's someone out there that's listening have not already arrived to where you're at in your walk, in your journey with the Most High. He told us in his word, the strong ought to in, uh, bear the infirmities of the weak. So this is why I constantly go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So this is what's going on, family. Why would you magnify a fleshly king when he already showed us in 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God? Neither do corruption in corruption. And then on top of that, to make it even more worse, Yahweh himself, Mark chapter 10 and verse 18. This is Yahweh himself. And Yahweh, some call him Jesus, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is Yahweh. In other words, why are you? treating me as a God? Why are you worshiping me as a God? Why are you telling people that I am God? There is none good but what? That is God, Yahweh. This is Yahweh Shai himself. The man telling us, stop worshiping me as a God. But no, we got some stubborn, stiff-necked, rebellious Hebrews, prophets, teachers, followers that will sit there and tell you no. Jesus is God. Not understanding the spiritual side. Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, salvation, the anointed one, the spirit of God, which is Christ. That same word that came down as a mighty, uh, a, fear, uh, a fierce man of war. This is the one that we should be following. This is the one that should be our guide. Jesus, the man, had that same spirit on the inside of him, and he was showing us an example to follow after, not to treat him as a God, but to follow his example. So this is what's going on. Isaiah chapter 12. Verse 2 and 3. It says, Behold, remember, Yahweh is my salvation. I will trust and be not afraid. 
for the spirit of God, Jehovah, for the spirit of God, Christ, Yahweh Shah the Messiah is my strength in my song. He also is become my salvation. See, this is speaking about salvation in only one. This is what people get mixed up. This is what people get mixed up. The Spirit of God, Jehovah. He also has become my salvation. His word. Not a man. Not a man. I'm going to pull this up one more time. Mark 10 and 18. And Yahweh shall said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God, Yahweh. This is clear, family. It's crystal clear. But this is what they tried to do over in the book of Esther, tried to get us to not praise the Most High, but they wanted us to praise their idols. And they tried to abolish the thing that came out of the mouth of the Most High, and that was ordained. That takes someone with some guts to try to go up against the Most High. They want to be gods. Numbers 23 and 19. Yahweh was not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? It's asking a question. Psalms 89 and verse 34. He says, my covenant will I not break. His agreement will he not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of his lips. Now see this right here, I'm going to have to make a connection. I have to make a connection on this. Now, peep this family. He said, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Now we're going to tie this back to the book of Esther. See what these nations have done. Chapter 14. And let's look at what he just got through telling them. Now, he just told us in Psalms 89 and 34, my covenant would I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. So in Esther 14 and 9, it says that they will abolish the thing that thou with thy mouth has ordained. So we know this thing was the covenant. And it came out of his lips, his mouth, his doctrine. He has ordained. They wanted to abolish this thing and destroy thine inheritance. In other words, destroy the house of Israel and stop the mouth of them that confess thee and quench the glory of thy house, of thy people, and of thine altar. This is what they did. This is what Psalms 83, 1 through 5 was talking about when they consented together with one consent that the name of Israel would be no more in remembrance. This is what it was talking about. 
Matter of fact, my next precepts was coming right back to Esther. So uh, verse 11 through 15. O creator, give not thy scepter unto them that be nothing. And let them not laugh at our fall, but turn their device upon themselves and make him an example that have begun this against us. Remember, O creator, make thyself known in time of our affliction and give me boldness O king of the nations and creator of all power. Give me eloquent speech in my mouth before the lion. Turn his heart to hate him that fight it against us. That there may be an end of him and of all that are like-minded to him but deliver us with thine hand, with thine power, and help me that am desolate, lacking knowledge. I'm lacking understanding. I'm lacking your wisdom, and which have no other help but thee. Thou knowest altogether, O creator, Thou knowest that I hate the glory of the unrighteous and abhor the bed of the uncircumcised and of all the heathen, of all the ungodly, of all the unrighteous. They did this thing to us and tried to cut us off from being a nation that the name of Israel would be no more remembrance. I hate these things. I hate the glory of the unrighteous. And I hate the bed of the uncircumcised and of all the heathen. Psalms 124. Verse 7 and 8. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. We was in those churches for 10, 20, 15 years, 30 years, some 50 years, being a faithful servant, doing whatever the pastor asks us to do. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped out of the prison houses. Our help is in the way of the Spirit of God who made heaven and earth. This is where our help is. Our help is not in the church buildings. Our help is in the word of God. Our life is in the word of God. Our nourishment is in the word of God. Our preservation is in the word of God. Our enlightenment is in the word of God. So why in the world will we continue to go in these church buildings? Matter of fact, I'm going to pull another precept just to prove the point. Acts chapter 17. Verse 24, it says, Yahweh that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is creator of heaven and earth, 
dwelleth not in temples made with hands, not in buildings, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he give it to all life and breath and all things. So why do we keep going in there? It's the question. That is the question you're going to have to answer. And that will be sitting in front of you on the judgment day of Christ. Our help is in the way of the spirit of God who made heaven and earth. Psalms 123, 1 through 4. Unto thee lift I up mine eyes. O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, remember as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of the power of their masters and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of the power of her mistress. So our eyes, our understanding wait upon the spirit of God, our God until, until that he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Spirit of God. Have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. This is what's going on. Psalms 121, verse 1 through 8. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Spirit of God, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The spirit of God is thy keeper. The spirit of God is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The spirit of God shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The spirit of God shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Second address. Chapter two. In verse 33 through 48. For the ones that have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand that might still be on the fence. That's still a little unsure about trusting in his word. It says, I, Adris, receive a charge of the creator upon the Mount Or, that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught and despised the commandment of the creator. So in other words, they spoke evil of the word that Adris was giving them. And therefore, I say unto you, O ye heathen, being that you acting as one, I'm going to call you one. You acting as a Gentile, I'm going to call you a Gentile. That hear and understand, look for your shepherd. See, your shepherd is not this fleshly king, this image of this false savior that they plastered upon the whole face of the earth. Their idol, their devil is not no fleshly king that you should be going around and magnifying. You done made songs about it. You done preached about it. You done prayed about it, lifting up and magnifying that fleshly king. 
You don't believe me? All you got to do is go to the gospel station on your radio channel. Go to YouTube. Go anywhere where gospel music is being played. They're magnifying a fleshly king. Singing about them, preaching about them, praying about them. A fleshly king. He said, oh, ye heathen that hear and understand, look for your shepherd, Christ, the spirit of God. He shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad giving thanks unto him that have led you to the heavenly kingdom. Arise up and stand. Behold, remember the number of those that be sealed in the feast, meaning what? In the learning of the creator. How many that's waking up out of deep sleep? How many is waking up out of the dust of the ground? from a spiritual death to a spiritual life, arise and stand and remember the number. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the learning of the creed, which are departed from the shadow of this world. Now, no more conform to this world, but being ye transformed by the renewing of their mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2 and have received the glorious garments of the creator, have received his covering, have received his spirit, have received his understanding, have received his wisdom knowledge. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, clothed in righteousness, which have fulfilled the law of the creator. you clothed in righteousness. So you got to be doing something to be clothed in righteousness. You can't just be having lip service. You got to be doing something. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the creator that thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed, they may be sanctified, they may be holy, they may be set apart. Our dream saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number. And they all praise, they all confess the creator with songs, with confessions. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel, and said, sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh, the way of Yahweh. We have to confess his way 
And this is why the teachers say, when thy judgments, when thy doctrine and teachings are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. They have confessed the way of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, the messenger, what young person is it that crowned them and give it them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of Yahweh, the servant of Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world, whom they have praised in the world. Yahweh shall the Messiah, salvation, the anointed one, the spirit of God, Christ. Then begin, I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the way of the creator. Then the angel said unto me, go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the creator thy God, thy God, thou hast seen. So now he wanting them to go and spread the message. Spread this word to let the people know what time it is. To let the people know that think not that I am come to send peace. I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Stop looking for these feel-good messages because I didn't come to bring you no feel-good message. I came to give you a word that will give you everlasting life. If only you will hearken and obey my voice. You looking for a feel good message is not a part of the most high God is. He came to execute judgment on the earth. This is what it is family. We got to put on the whole armor of God. We got to be a soldier in Yahweh's army. Psalms 122, verse 1 through 3. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Spirit of God. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as comparison, a city that is compact together. See, this goes right back to earlier in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, and verse 20, when he was telling us, Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. This is what this tied to. Let's get some more Tobit. Tobit uh, chapter 13, and we're gonna hit verse 16 and 17. He says, for Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires and emeralds and precious stone. Gonna be built up with the followers of Christ. The ones that's following Christ. Thy walls and thy and towers and battlements with pure gold. Nothing but truth. Nothing but wisdom and knowledge. Verse nine and 10. Oh, Jerusalem, the holy city, the holy people, he will scourge thee for thy children's works and will, and will have mercy again on the sons of the righteous. Give praise to the creator for he is good and praise the everlasting king. See, this everlasting king right here is different from that 
fleshly king that the other nations was trying to get us to magnify. It's different from their idols that they was trying to get us to magnify. And I'm glad I brought this up because I see where I skipped the precept when I was on that subject. So I'm going to go back and pull that precept, but it ties into this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back and correct that because I just saw where I skipped a precept. So let's go back to Esther, just for a reference. Still speaking on it. Verse 10. It says, well, first, let's go right here to verse seven right here. Say, because we worship their gods. We worship their gods. This is what we have done. And then in verse 10, he says, and open the mouths of the heathen to set forth the praises, the confessions of the idols, not of the most high, but of the idols, not of the everlasting king, but of the idols, and to magnify a fleshly king forever. This is what they wanted us to stay in. They wanted us to get on that strong delusion and stay on it. But if it had not been for the spirit of God that was on our side, Baruch chapter four, verse six and seven, this is the one that I skipped. He's given us some information here. He said, ye were sold to the nations, to these same ones that was trying to get us to do those things, not for your destruction, but because ye move Yahweh to Rav, this is what we have done. This is what we are, we are guilty of. And this is what we have to acknowledge, family. He said, ye were delivered unto the enemies. For ye provoke him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to Yahweh. So when I made the statement earlier that idols means devils and devils means idols. They one in the same. This is what I was speaking of. We want to magnify a fleshly king. We want to magnify an idol. We want to magnify a devil. This is what we want to do that image. So now let's go back to Tobit 13 and get this corrected. So verse 10 says, give praise, give confession to the creator, not to a fleshly king, not to that image. But we want to give confession to the creator. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to do, family. For he is good. Who is good? The creator is good, not the fleshly king. Even Yahweh shall say, why thou callest me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. I'm going to keep repeating this until it penetrates to our, our spirit, our hearts, our mind, and our soul. That we must give our praise to the creator and not to a fleshly king. 
It's very important, family. Very important. He said, and praise the everlasting king. Not the fleshly king. He said that his tabernacle may be builded in D again with joy. See, when we praise and confess the everlasting king, this is what we have to, to get. His tabernacle may be built in India again with joy, with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding. And let him make joyful, dear indeed, those that are captives. And love indeed forever those that are miserable. Psalms 122, verse four through six. He says, whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the spirit of God unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the way of the spirit of God. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Mm. He's letting us know these things are set. He's doctrine and teachings. They are set. He say, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 17. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. So when he just got through telling us that those that seek me early shall prosper, he said, I love them that love me. I promise them that promise me. Those that seek me early shall find me. Psalms. 122, seven through nine. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. In other words, peace be in thy chambers and prosperity within thy mansion. That's why he told us, come, my people, enter into thy chambers, shut thy doors about thee. In my father's house, there are many mansions. That's why he told us this. Many mansions. For there are set thrones of judgment, doctrine, and teaching the thrones of the house of David. In my father's house, there are many mansions. So how all of this is tying in. For my brethren and companions sake, I will now say, peace be within thee. Because the house of the Spirit of God, our God, 
I will seek thy good. Second address, chapter 16, verse 74 through 78. It says, hear, O ye, my beloved, my brethren, my promised ones, said the creator. Behold, remember the days of trouble are at hand but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. For Yahweh is your guide. God is your guide. God is, God is your guide. In the guide of them who keep my commandments, in precepts, said the creator God. Let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. So in other words, there'll be a part of that second death which is the lake of fire. So when thy judgments, thy doctrine and teachings are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. They will learn about his sword and how he didn't come to bring peace, but how he came to bring a sword right here in Matthew 10 and 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword, it's Christ speaking. And also wisdom of Solomon 18 and 15 is confirming it. Thine almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of a people that's destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So family, I hope and pray that someone got something from this word. I hope that it was able to make Someone that maybe was lacking a little bit stronger. And I pray that you get stronger and stronger as the days go by. Because we are living in some terrible times. Anyone that understands parables and precepts, we see all of the signs all around us in this matrix that we're in. But the ones that's equipped would be able to go in and out the matrix and help draw others to Christ. So family, I'm gonna say a happy Sabbath to everyone. Follow Christ, obey his word, Seek out his precepts diligently. He will bless you abundantly with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So I'm going to say a shalom to everyone until we meet again. Shalom.